Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our new series, Making the Case. I'm Kimberly Guilfoyle, National Chair of Trump Victory Finance Committee. We have a fantastic show for you today. Tonight, we'll be discussing the importance of a law and order in the United States of America. We have seen lawlessness and chaos occur across the nation in Democrat-controlled cities. We have seen our memorials destroyed, businesses burned to the ground, and innocent children killed on the street. Sadly, this is America's future if Joe Biden and the Democrats win this November. But first, a word. The mainstream media wants the public to believe they are objective journalists. They want you to believe that they bring you the news. However, Americans aren't stupid. Anyone who spends five minutes watching a mainstream news channel or reading a mainstream newspaper will quickly realize that these media outlets only bring you news that fits within their narrative. What is their narrative, you might ask? Well, for the last three and a half years, it has been to stop President Trump from making America great. The story changes, but the goal is always the same. Do you remember the two years of the Russian collusion hoax? Do you remember the sham around the impeachment? Today, the media focuses on COVID and tries to blame President Trump, a global pandemic that originated in China. President Trump put a travel ban and was criticized for it by Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi. The same people switched their tune and said President Trump wasn't doing enough just a few short weeks later. These people want to have it both ways, but we won't let them. Time and again, the media has gotten it wrong. You know what the media doesn't report, that just last month in the midst of a global pandemic, the US economy added 4.8 million jobs. That's right, in June, we added 4.8 million jobs. That is a record, and that is something you will not hear in the media. And let's switch to those peaceful protests which have burned and looted our cities across this country. For weeks, the media establishment kept telling you that the Republicans who are protesting the shutdowns are science deniers, selfish, unsafe people who are trying to kill your grandparents. However, you didn't hear one peep from the mainstream media when BLM protests started. Make no mistake, what happened to George Floyd was wrong, an injustice, and frankly, un-American. However, when protests transformed into looting and rioting, which turned into the burning of entire neighborhoods, the same mainstream media gave them a pass. If you don't want the police defunded, you only have one choice in November. If you want to recognize your country in four years, President Trump is your choice. Joe Biden isn't a moderate from Scranton. He's a swamp creature from the deep lagoons of the deep swamp controlled by radical interests that fundamentally want to reshape the United States. My first guests know firsthand what happens when an angry crowd comes to your home. Mark and Patricia from the suburb of St. Louis, Missouri are joining us tonight. Thank you both for being here. Thanks for having us. And God bless you guys. And you have become household names across this country. And Mark, when the angry protesters came to the front of your house, what was going on through your mind? I thought we were going to die. I mean, you got to have this in the context of St. Louis, where on June the 2nd, downtown was burned. I watched a 7-Eleven from the first brick go through the window, through the looting, through the burning of it, all the way through, with nobody showing up, no police, no fire department. The same night, the retired police captain gets murdered during secondary employment. These people are, are serious. And, you know, the so-called peaceful protest kind of ended when they smashed through my, the gate into my neighborhood and poured into my front yard. And we're talking two, 300, I think the estimates are as much as 500 people all rushing at us, coming towards us. We're just out in the east patio trying to, trying to barbecue dinner. And I thought that within seconds we'd be overrun, that they'd be in the house, they'd be setting fires, they'd be killing us, and that was going to be the end of things. It's uh, so terrifying just to imagine what you both had to go through. And um, again, we're joined by Mark and Patricia McCloskey. Patricia, I cannot even imagine, and I have to tell you how inspirational you are to so many uh, women out there to see how you were standing right by your husband's side, defending your home, defending your lives. You boldly stood there. And were you ever worried at some point that it could get you know, worse when you saw how things were developing? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and but for the guy with the there was every expectation it was going to get worse. I called 911. The first thing I did was call 911. 
and the, the police came after, well, well after everything had ended. Uh, we have private security on our streets. Um, maybe 10 minutes into it, I looked down and the private security was just parked in the middle with its flashing lights on uh, in the middle of the sea of protesters, couldn't do anything. So I knew we were on our own and um, this was this was it. And we were terrified. So Mark, authorities have since visited your home. Uh, what is the latest development in the case? Last Friday night, the uh, the local police came and issued a search warrant. They were the, the cops that showed up were very professional. They uh, didn't want to have to do it. They're just doing their job. They're very apologetic. They uh, rang the doorbell. They said, take as much time as you need. Talk to your lawyer if you want to. I brought down the uh, the AR-15 and handed it to them and told them it was unloaded, but I wanted to see them clear the rifle anyway so that nobody got hurt. Told them that the pistol was at our attorney's office. And then uh, we wanted to document it. So uh, Patty shot a picture. And before she did, she asked them if they would turn away so that they wouldn't get in trouble if people wouldn't be mad at them for participating in it. And they all did. I mean, they were, they were super guys. And and quite frankly, once on the second event, when they came back to, to get us, uh, we then had support from the White House on down. We had cooperation from, from the federal government, the state government, the local police. The police, cap, the police chief himself came out and met with my private security. And that's the way it was supposed to work. We had a, the protesters were loud, they were angry. They stayed outside the gate. Nobody got hurt. No car, no damage. It's just unbelievable. Did you ever think in this country that you would face a situation like that? And you have every right to defend yourself. That is your constitutional right to be able to defend yourselves from harm, from potentially death, from them trying to burn down your house. Um, and it's, it's incredible. Like if you hadn't stepped in, you can only imagine, you know, what would have happened because apparently people are allowed to just burn down other people's homes or shoot people or kill people. It's out of control. And the local newspaper, the St. Louis uh, Post Dispatch, has come after you. And what was the has the local media coverage sort of been like for the two of you going through this whole firestorm? Well, the Post Dispatch has called us despicable people. They went, they they went back through my entire life. They even published a picture of a birthday card my dad sent me on my 20th birthday in 1976. All kinds of outrageous uh, mi intentional misrepresentations made by neighbors and other people. I mean, yeah, they, they're, they're, the typical tactic is to steer you, to especially embarrass you, and to try to get you to, a, you know, go on an apology campaign. But we have nothing to apologize for. We did nothing wrong, uh, and we're not, we're not going to back down. Yeah, and I, and I can't even imagine, you know, um, the media, as you mentioned, they've reported that your weapons have since been uh, confiscated. How soon do you think you'll be able to get those back? And obviously, how do you feel now um, about your ability to be able to protect yourselves in your home? Well, right now, we, we, we're kind of defenseless. And so we're, we're, we're depending upon uh, retained private security. But, you know, we live in the city of St. Louis. We Our office is three blocks away further into the city than this. And uh, the, the background level of violence in St. Louis is so much that, well, I was on Fox with, with former Governor Greitens on Monday night when he left the, uh, the show. There was a double murder in front of him on, on Linda Dulles. I mean, this is a, it's a real war zone out here. It's outrageous. And, and what is your message, uh, both of you, to those who want to defund the police? Well, if you defund the police, there's nothing standing between you and the mob other than yourself. We have gotten a tremendous outpouring of support from around the country and around the world. And everybody's saying, you know, I never owned a gun before, but we've got to do it now. Mm -hmm. And Patricia, how do you feel, you know, about uh, women and having their ability to protect themselves and bear arms? What's your message to women out there? Well, you don't think it's going to happen to you. And I certainly didn't think it was going to happen to me. But I think it, it's time that we, um, we we not just stand behind the men that it was going to have the guns. And we need to learn a little ourselves and suck up and learn and bear arms ourselves. And I, I didn't think it would happen. I didn't think it, it would need to come to that. But unfortunately, it has. And, and Patricia, you would do it all again, would you not? I had no choice. I have to, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I want to thank you both, uh, Mark and Patricia McCloskey, for being here on the program. We're going to be following your case and know that you have the support of great patriots that love liberty and freedom and protect uh, the Constitution. And God bless you guys. I'm so happy that you're both here and able to be on the show because you were able to be courageous to protect yourselves and defend your lives. So God bless you both and stay safe.
Thank, Thank you, you very much. Question. All right, perfect. Uh, we'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Stay tuned for more of Making the Case.